Good morning, church. I'm Pastor Marty Johnston, pastor of Algonquin and Central United Methodist Churches. And I bid you greeting on this, the day that the Lord has made. As the scriptures declare, I rejoiced when they said unto me, let us come to the house of the Lord. Speaking of the house of the Lord, I can't think of a finer place for people who call themselves notorious to be. So <laughs> it is good to have you and thank you uh, for sharing with us. We like to begin our service by sharing with the reading our mission statement. This is, this is who we want to be in, in ministry to the world and ministry to the community. And so I invite you uh, to join me in reading these words. Connecting all people to God by building bridges of caring, outreach, and acceptance. Thank you. Would you please stand as you're able and join us in our call to worship. In the fire and the flame. In the division and the despair. In the shadows and the sorrow. In this moment, we gather together to worship, to pray, to sing, and to lament. Would everybody turn to their hymnals in 529 as the song?
Shall we pray? Glorious God, Christ of mysterious paradox, enter the paradoxes of our lives. Divide us when false unity divides us from you. Unify us when false division separates us from one another. Connect with us so securely that we may connect with one another in the power of your Holy Spirit as we worship together this day. We pray this in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Please be seated. We have a time for our younger Christians. If you're willing, you can come and I'll sit down and talk if you're willing. But if you're more comfortable, I'll walk over there. <laughs> All right. A brave soul. Two brave souls. Thank you for coming. And you can sit down if you're comfortable. You just need to remember to get up and go back when I'm done. Yeah. How are you today? Good. Are you good? Well, good. Do you know that sometimes, and it's sad to say this, but sometimes people say things that aren't very nice to us, or we think that they aren't very nice. They may say something that hurts our feelings, or they may, it, it may not only be the way, what they say, but it might also be the way they say it, too. Well, what I want to talk about today is not so much about words that are meant to hurt us, but words that are meant to help us. And sometimes, those come to us in a way that is harsh or stark or sudden. Uh, I won't do it, but they come to us like a poke in the rib. You can thank me later for not doing that. <laughs> so let me use an example. Let's suppose that right in front of us was a rattlesnake or we'll make it something a little cuter. How about a skunk? They're cute. They're nice and soft and furry and have lovely colors. And if you saw a skunk, would you want to pet that skunk? No. Well, you, both of you are very wise for not wanting to do that. But suppose that you didn't know what a skunk did and you just see a nice, soft, furry animal with a lovely tail that's slowly working its way up and you want to pet it. Would, should I, when I see that and I know that you don't know what's about to happen to you, would you like it if I said nothing at all? No. Probably not, no you'd probably say, why didn't you tell me not to pet the skunk? And by the way, sometimes people knowingly pet a skunk. That's another story there. <laughs> it's another sermon. Don't pet skunks. No, instead, if you were reaching down to pet that skunk, I probably would go, stop, and I'd say it real loud, wouldn't I? And I'd probably go, don't do that and it might sound kind of harsh. But the reason why it's loud and the reason why it's harsh, it's because I don't want you to get sprayed by a skunk. Sometimes when we read the Bible, we read some words that come to us like someone is shouting at us or someone is telling us something harsh, like don't do that. The bigger picture behind that is God is telling us, I care for you, 
and I don't want something bad to happen to you. And I'm trying to get your attention so that you see that. And so when we see those words, and when we read those words, let's not go, wow, God is a meanie. Let us instead ask ourselves, what is it that God is trying to protect me from and trying to get my attention about? So I do a thing uh, with prayer where I say uh, a few words and then everybody gets to follow after me. So if I say, dear Lord, you say... Okay, very good. Dear Lord, thank you for loving me. Help me to listen to your words. even when they sound harsh because I know you love me in Jesus name amen amen thank you and you may go back to your seats Standard version of the Bible. I'm on Hebrews uh, 11, 29, 12, and through 2. By faith, people passed through the Red Sea as if there were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rehab and <clears throat> prostitutes did not perish with those who disobeyed because she had received the spice in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fall, fail me, to tell the Galish, Galish and, and Simon and Jericho, Dave, uh, of David and Samuel the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms administered his justice and obtained promises and shut the mouth of lions, quenched the power of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war and put foreign armies to flee. Women received their death by re others were tormented and refused to accept release in order to obtain a better reckoning record, record. others suffer by mocking and flogging and and even chains and imprisonment they were stoned to death they were swamped in two, or sworn in two. They were killed by the sword, and they were about to, in skins of, and sheep and goats, despite the prosecution torment. Of those of the world who were not worthy, they were wandered in the desert and mountains and caves and the holes in the ground. Yet all these, through though they were commanded for their faith, commend, commended for their faith, did not receive what they were promised, since God had provided something better, so they would not part us, make us perfect. Therefore, since we 
are surrounded by great, so great a, a cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with persistence the race that was set before us. Look to Jesus, pioneer and perfect of faith, who for the sake of joy that were set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, sham, and had taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. So said the Bible. Thank you. Our scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, and it's one of those passages that I would not select on my own to preach. But because I preach from the lectionary, which means that scriptures are selected every Sunday, I'm pressed into a corner. But I can guarantee you that these are words that no one in this congregation has ever crocheted and put up in their family room. They're difficult words. Hear the words of Jesus speaking. I have come to cast fire upon the earth, and how I wish it was already ablaze. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I've come to put, bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, 
it is going to rain and so it happens and when you see the south wind blowing you say there will be scorching heat and it happens you hypocrites you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky but why do you not know how to interpret the present time the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god so i need to give you a little background tina and i this year will celebrate our 10th wedding anniversary together in november and even though we've been together for almost 10 years and then dated before that we continue to find things out about one another and Tina disclosed to me that she had never ever read or watched the Hobbit or the Lord of the Rings how's that even possible and so we have begun the process of watching the movies on Amazon Prime. And if you have watched those movies, you'll know that there are creatures in that series called orcs or goblins. And they always make these clanging and knocking and pounding noises and then they had these throaty, almost electrical kind of, uh, elect like almost artificial kind of voices. Scary stuff. So with that as the backdrop, it's 5 a.m. We are sound asleep. And we hear... charging malfunction <laughs> and it came from our bedroom we had no idea what that was and about 10 minutes later it happened again turns out it was the smoke alarm Trustees, I have no idea where you bought these things. <laughs> we will have a meeting to discuss that. <laughs> it got our attention. And having been awakened that way, it took 90 minutes before Tina could coax me to come out from under the bed. It got our attention. And it told me that when this thing speaks, you better listen to it. And I have, I'm scared to death of what it will do when it smells smoke. But I bet I'll heed its warning. And I'll carry it out to make sure that we're taken to safety. In that same context, Jesus' words come harsh. They come hard to us, but they are here to again provide us with the heart of God who is even willing to say the hard things to us to help us lead lives of wholeness and wellness and blessing. And Jesus speaks and says that he has come to cast fire upon the earth. You may recall the words of John the Baptist when speaking of himself saying, I baptize with water, but one is coming after me who will baptize with fire. We find throughout scripture the image of fire. In Deuteronomy, God is described as a consuming fire who goes before the armies of Israel as they go to conquer the land of Canaan. 
we find that the prophet Elijah, when he offers the sacrifice in front of the 400 prophets of Baal, has his sacrifice accepted with fire from heaven. We find that Solomon, at the dedication of the temple, utters the words of dedication and offers everything to God, and the sacrifice is received by fire from heaven. It shouldn't be that surprising to us when we see someone who's passionate about something, don't we say, they're on fire. And I think that what Jesus is saying is, I have come to set a holy fire within you. And in case they have had forgotten the message, what was the symbol of Pentecost? when the Holy Spirit came and settled upon every person there. It was the tongues of fire. In a playful way, I'm going to tell you this morning, get lit. Let the fire of God burn deep within you. The passion for all that is good and for all that is holy in worship of God and in service to neighbor. And Jesus says, I've come to set this fire, but I wish it were already here. And what would he say today as he looked upon his church, as he looked upon you, as he looked upon me. Would he be wishing for that fire to be ablaze? Or would he instead have words of encouragement to keep fanning the flames? This is the baptism with which he was baptized And he served faithfully to redeem mankind, humankind, at the cross. But Jesus goes on to speak harsher and more difficult words about division. Do you think I've come to bring peace to earth? No, I tell you, rather division. The angels saying, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And we believe, and scripture teaches, that there will be peace in the end. But in these days in between, we find great division. And we find division, first and foremost, between those who wish to follow Jesus and those who say that they are opposed to Jesus. Many suffer even at this very hour in lands that do not allow religious freedom. And we should always be mindful of our brothers and sisters who face trials because of their faith. I know I grew up during the Cold War where it was very common to hear of believers behind the Iron Curtain who would not bow to communism as saying that the state is God, but would say that Jesus is Lord, much like the first century believers found themselves saying, Caesar is not Lord, Jesus is Lord. And they faced terrible persecution for that. In our New Testament reading, which was our first reading, talked about people who suffered because of their faith, and yet they were commended for their faith. 
And so we have the division of those who are opposed to the work and the gospel and those who wish to follow. But sadly, we also have division of people who say that they follow Jesus. The Christian church, if it were an army, could best be described as the only army on earth that regularly shoots at itself. One denomination takes on another denomination. People spend all kinds of time. There are places where you and I could not take communion. Division. Comedian Emo Phillips wanted to illustrate that very well by setting a stage where he was walking and he caught a person standing on a bridge ready to jump off and end his life. And he ran to him and he tried to find some way to build a bond with him. And he found that they had the same denomination in common. But he couldn't leave it there. He said, but are you of this denomination that went back to the split 40 years ago? And he said, I am. And he went, well, what about the one that happened 80 years ago? I am. He got clear back into the 1600s. <coughs> and there was a division. At which point, Emo Phillips said, die, heretic. And he pushed him off the bridge. <clears throat> it is sad that we find division. And it is sad that we find it within our own denomination. I'll just say a few words about that situation. Some would like to say that the division is over the issue of human sexuality. I believe that it's actually a broader uh, and a deeper issue than that. There is a movement known as the Global Methodist Church that views itself as traditional and holding to traditional teachings on human sexuality. Whereas the United Methodist Church would say we take a different view on human sexuality. Here the temptation begins to start firing shots at one another and to say, well, you're not reading the Bible correctly or you don't believe the Bible or you're an agent of Satan and I believe that our call is to rise above that. Because the difference lies in how do we look at the words of Scripture. When we read those words that are printed, and I realize I'm wading into some weeds here, but let me do so gently and respectfully. There are those that say, What's printed is printed, and we take it as literal as we can. And there are those who will say, well, we need to look at it in terms of context of time and place and culture, and to consider things in our present time and to look at things through the eyes of Jesus rather than to allow things to look at Jesus through different lenses. So let's give a, an example of this at another time in the United States. 200 years ago, Bible-believing Christians believed in slavery 
And they had 200 verses to support their view on slavery. You will not find one Bible verse that says, get rid of your slaves. You will find many verses on how to care for your slave, how to treat them. And even some that get pretty difficult if you beat your slave and they die within three days, you can be charged for murder. But if you beat your slave and they live a fourth day, you will not be charged with murder. I dare say if we took a vote today that we would unanimously say no to slavery even though there are verses to the contrary. Do you see the struggle now? Do you understand that it's how people are approaching Scripture? And it's very important to note that deeply Christian people are on both sides of that issue. We should not demonize our brothers and sisters even if we passionately disagree on that particular topic. Both sides take Scripture seriously, but both sides are not able to convince each other with how they view Scripture. Let me just give another example for you to think about. If we were to take things literally in the writings of Paul, Paul said women should be silent in the church. I happen to enjoy today's singing. Did you? Now I know that those verses are there. But I think that there may be some more to the story. Something about context that may not apply to today. This is why our Methodist heritage teaches us that we should approach things with four lenses. What does scripture say? How has church tradition and history responded to this? What does our reason say about this? And what is our experience? Think about the first century believers. For millennia, church has been on Saturday. For millennia, no ham and eggs, dietary laws, laws about who you could hang with, who was clean and who was unclean. And just like that, Peter has a vision where God declares that which you think is unclean is now clean. That had to be a huge shift for those people. And I think that the fire that Jesus is looking to set is that fire that melts us from being the frozen chosen to the people who are alive and filled with the Spirit of God and willing to follow where that spirit leads, even if it makes us uncomfortable. Even if it may go against the way we've always done it. Famous last words in a church, we've always done it this way. 
every pastor who gets a new appointment will always tell this joke privately. They got me together and they told me they want their pastor to be bold, to be visionary, to be prophetic, to be priestly, so that they can stay the same. Jesus is telling us, don't be the same. Move forward and know that not everybody is going to walk with you. Jesus speaks further about the weather. And I think it ties in with the first part. I don't think that it's some schizophrenic shift that all of a sudden he's speaking about the weather. He says, look, you can tell when it's going to rain. You can tell when it's going to be warm. Side note, did you know we had one day this year where Houghton was warmer than Death Valley? By one degree. The wind came from the right direction and it went clear all over land and never got cooled by uh, any of the Great Lakes. Little trivia. But the wind, we know that the wind will affect the weather. And then Jesus says, but you hypocrites, you don't see what's happening in front of you. We had a prophet in our midst who musically says the same things. Bob Dylan. The times, they are a-changing. And if we are flexible and willing to allow the Spirit of God to burn within us and to lead us, we will allow that change. And we will work where God is blessing. And we will serve where the Spirit is leading. Our first reading gave us many examples of people who by faith some overcame, others did not. All were commended for their faith. And then we get to chapter 12 that begins with the word therefore. Bible study note, when you see the word therefore, stop and see what it's there for. And the author is bringing us, and when I say author, they actually think that book was a sermon, by the way. He's bringing us back into being faithful and obedient and people of action and motion. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus. I had the opportunity to graduate from Spring Arbor University with a Master of Arts in Organizational Management. And when it came time for graduation, the graduation was held at the campus where the church was for the Free Methodist Church of Spring Arbor. And it's this enormous building with all kinds of rooms and additions and such. And they put us in some far back corner and assembled us and got us all robed and got us all dressed. And when it came, came time to go to the sanctuary, when they opened the door and we began to snake our way through the hallways, our professors were there, all dressed up. And those doctoral robes, boy, they look really, really cool. And they applauded as we went by. It was one of the coolest moments of my life. But wait, there was more. 
when we came into the sanctuary, we have a lovely gallery. So did Spring Arbor. And that's where all of the guests were seated. And when we walked in, they stood and applauded. Beloved of God, I was doing so good. Let's give them something to applaud about. Let's get the heavenly amens and not the oh mys. Let us run with faith, with a fire. And it doesn't happen sitting here doing nothing. A commentator put it this way. Sometimes the spirit has to burn up so that we will wake up and that we will clean up. May we be filled with the fire and the passion of the Holy Spirit. May we be the people the heaven applauds for our love of God and our love and service to neighbor. I believe we can do that if we're willing. Amen. for the offering so come forward and put your offering in the box as our guest plays my shepherd will supply my need Now would everybody stand and uh, let's do the doxology. Praise.
everybody uh, join me in the prayer of dedication. Most loving God, most loving and welcome, we bring these gifts to you. Now everybody can be seated, please. As we come to our time uh, of prayer requests, uh, I have just a few, and then I will uh, give an invitation for you uh, to share. But if you do share one, Please speak up because you're competing with a fan and many years of Led Zeppelin. Uh, so uh, do speak up. So uh, first, uh, we just want to, uh, I want, was going to comment last week after communion, but I wanted, opted to not say so. But when I went to serve Pat communion, she kept playing with one hand and took communion. I've never had an accompanist do that, and I'm like, that's a superpower. That anybody could do that one-handed. And then, like three days later, Pat called, and she's now one-handed. <laughs> and um, so our prayers for your healing, and uh, you, we, uh, we are going to miss you, yes. But uh, prayers uh, for your healing there. I have also spared you from a side of myself that I must no longer conceal, and that is I love puns. You may not think they're funny, but I love puns. And in sharing a prayer request with you, our beloved Mackenzie, our offer, um, office administrator and well done SPRC in hiring her had a mishap this week with a cow and uh, got a concussion. Now uh, she's fine and she's able to work and she, but as she shared this with me I couldn't resist and so I went so I think that's utterly terrible. And she began to roll her eyes, and I said, are you going to milk this injury out? And that was when she said, it was a beef cow. And I immediately responded and said, oh, so you're upping the stakes, I see. That may or may not have happened. <laughs> but prayers for Mackenzie. Uh, as uh, she is uh, recovering. Are there prayer requests that you, or praises that you would like to share uh, with your brothers and sisters this morning? Prayers for a young lady um, battling an eating disorder uh, and for God's grace to help her overcome that and to address all the hurts that are inside of there. When I, I will be sharing a series of petitions uh, that ends with my saying, merciful God, and when I say merciful God, you are invited uh, to respond with receive our prayer. So, merciful God, trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate your lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings in faith around the globe 
and bless the work of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. And we think especially of those who face persecution for your sake. We pray for their strength and for their deliverance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for all people harmed by discrimination. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. In our joy and in our tears, be near us. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us. May we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, spoken and unspoken, Merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom, we offer this prayer and pray together in the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Looking at uh, our announcements, uh, the office will be closed on Thursday of this week and will reopen on Monday uh, the 22nd. Uh, do note uh, SPRC, I believe it's not in the bulletin, but there is a meeting on the 16th at 7 uh, p.m. And that's uh, to get things ready for the uh, church conference of SPRC church conference meeting of August 29. Looking ahead, Ad Council, we will be meeting on August 23rd. Are there any other announcements that should be highlighted? Well, at the conclusion of our service, please do join us downstairs uh, for coffee hour and fellowship. And our closing song gives us a chance to practice having a little fire. Let's not sing it as the frozen chosen. It's soon and very soon. Let's do our best to sing it with the passion of a Pentecostal African-American choir. Because soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. 
Would you please stand as you're able as we sing hymn 706. Beloved of God, hear these words of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go forth in the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>